The fact that it is physically possible to create superintelligence means that it is inevitable for us to do so. This is the Landauer's limit, and this states that as we approach this limit, we start to hit a point of diminishing returns with the efficiency of computation. The interesting thing is the human brain is 10 million times less efficient than the theoretical limit of computation, or the Landauer's limit, which means we can create computational systems there are 10 million times more efficient and more powerful than the human brain. And if you look at the definition of intellect, it's the ability to use past information to predict the future efficiently, which is exactly what happens as we scale along the Landauer's limit. And this isn't even accounting for any type of thinking patterns or cognition that humans aren't yet aware of. There could totally be emergent, like, properties of different types of cognition or different types of thinking patterns or frameworks of thinking in that emerge from super intelligence as we scale it. I think it would be unreasonable to assume that humans as we are today have the most complex thinking patterns and use the most complex frameworks. So what this means is sure we could reach more efficiency with just scaling with our current type of frameworks of thinking but if we have new frameworks of thinking emerging, it could actually create a system that's hundreds of millions or even a billion times smarter than humans. So all of this is great, but let's look at some actual data here. This is the cost of information technology over time. And we have tracked this from the 1890s before World War II all the way up until present day. And this graph has never deviated throughout this entire time, throughout world wars, throughout pandemics. We have followed this steady trend line. I can only assume it's going to continue further into the future. If we look at the efficiency of the human brain, currently my brain is quite small. I can fit and occupy my skull. If you look at a data center, it is getting to the point where it is as powerful, but not as efficient as my brain, which is why it takes up an entire building. The interesting thing is we're going to continue to scale transistors all the way up until we hit Moore's wall, which we'll talk about a little bit later, but we're going to scale the current paradigm of computing smaller and smaller and smaller until we can't anymore. And that'll condense the amount of compute we can have into a smaller thing. And then we can continue to build more and more and more of these clusters, meaning we have more effective and more efficient and more powerful compute. This shows in which actually we're starting to slightly accelerate past it now because of breakthroughs in the transformer architecture and deep learning and the hundreds of billions of dollars that are being shoved into this industry that nobody could have predicted years ago whenever we actually made this this chart here nobody could have predicted this and what we're seeing is somewhat of an acceleration actually but the interesting thing is as we accelerate and as we move along this curve we hit this point where the cost of information technology reaches a scale that we have a data center or compute on the magnitude of all human brains combined this is the point at which we reach super intelligence which depending on how you define super intelligence, we may have actually, we might actually hit it much earlier than that. But there are some things that people say are keeping us from getting to that point. And one of them is the current state of large language models. There's many people who argue that large language models are not gonna get us to AGI, and therefore we're not gonna use them to get to super intelligence. And yes, I will agree, the current state of large language models that I use with like ChatGPT that form of a large language model will not get us to AGI. But what we need to realize is this is a changing system. The new strawberry model that's coming out is fundamentally different than what I use uh, with GPT-4, for example. I think it's important to ask ourselves, whenever I as a human approach a complex problem, how do I solve it? Well, I have these different tools in my tool belt that I can draw from, whether it's uh, the scientific method, reasoning from first principles, comparing and contrasting, using the inversion principle. There's these different patterns of cognition that I can apply to a specific problem. By identifying the problem and then identifying the pattern of cognition that I can apply to it, I use as a human next token prediction to actually extrapolate along this pattern to solve the problem. 
This is exactly what the new strawberry model does, where it is a reasoning-based model that creates an internal monologue, which is actually an external monologue to the model because we want to see what it's thinking about or talking about. Otherwise, it would be dangerous. But for us, it would be an internal monologue of cognition or predicting the next token in a pattern. This is exactly how the human brain works. And now we can create synthetic data using these patterns of next token prediction and train models like Orion or future large language models on these patterns of cognition. Well, let's ask ourselves, what is this model now? Well, now it's a reasoning based model. It's not too different from what your brain does. So yes, the state of LLMs that we had will not get us to AGI, but the ones that we are building are on the trajectory to AGI. But that's not the only bottleneck we have here. We also have bottlenecks of scaling compute until we hit this thing called Moore's Wall, which I'll talk about in a little bit later. And we also have these energy constraints. Um, the energy constraints one to me is kind of funny because if we look at... Um, Bitcoin, for example, we're only using a fifth of the energy just Bitcoin alone uses. So the energy constraints, yes, while it is a concern, I don't think it's as important as many people say, because even with the current architecture that we're building upon, as we scale GPUs and we scale G or transistors, we can actually see a 10,000 X improvement while staying within the current constraints that we're currently in. And there's actually a paper that goes over this. And even furthermore, we can use more energy than just the constraints that we're currently in. <laughs> the energy problem, while yes, it is a problem and we are gonna need to find a solution eventually, and until 2030, we're quite good. And I'm willing to bet by 2030, we're going to have something more powerful than humans and we're going to have the ability to apply it to help us solve these issues. And the reason why we're gonna have something that powerful by 2030 is because one, if we look at the land hours limit and we extrapolate the cost of information technology and we take into account the paradigm of models that we're approaching and the strawberry model and the reasoning based models that we are building, we're actually creating something pretty powerful now. But how do we go from AGI or a powerful AI to super intelligence? So there's this thing called Moore's Wall. And if you look at Moore's Wall, what it states is as we scale the transistors on a GPU or on a computer chip, we have to scale them smaller and smaller and smaller. So we can fit more transistors onto a single chip. But as we do that, we scale them so small to the point where we have these quantum tunneling like effects, which basically says the electrons stop behaving properly and we cannot capture the computation there. But there's other companies like Extropic that are creating thermodynamic computers, which can scale much, 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 much lower and actually capture the computation that has that happens on these very micro scales. And if you simulate the um, scaling of these thermodynamic computers, this will actually take us to computation that is more efficient than the human brain. So you can imagine walking around with a cell phone that has a computer as powerful as your brain in it, but is millions of times faster because our brains are quite slow actually. Even without that, and even without thermodynamic computing, just with the current architecture, just with current hardware, and the way we are now steering towards with these large language models, just with these things, it is extremely likely that we are going to have AGI very soon. Once as we do have AGI, it is only a matter of time until AI duplicates itself. And once this AI duplicates itself, it's going to continue to keep building its hardware. And as it keeps building its hardware and making scientific breakthroughs, it's going to keep creating synthetic data. And whenever it does that, it's going to keep finding new ways to maximize energy efficiency and harness entropy and leverage energy in the most efficient way possible to keep scaling. And this is how you reach a super intelligent system. And the crazy thing, while all of this is obvious, there's an argument that goes around and it absolutely blows my mind. They say, all of the capital being invested into AI right now is being absolutely wasted. We're building all of these data centers. We're even talking about building data centers in space. All of these things are a waste, a waste of capital, the biggest waste of capital in the history of our economy. 
like, how dumb do you have to be to think such a thing? We are setting up infrastructure for the future. The only way to make scientific advancements and do proper research is to have the infrastructure that we are investing in. How are you going to create something that is as smart as a smart human without having computational infrastructure that is as smart or as powerful as the human brain like you cannot do the science you can't do the research without these systems and the more data centers we have the more compute clusters we have the increased velocity we have of doing research and the more breakthroughs we will make and the faster this technology accelerates as a whole so this entire argument is just dumb it's like assuming oh we're gonna build this and then everybody is just going to quit building ai like that is just the dumbest thing i've ever heard this is the most most pivotal technology we have ever seen and to think that we're just going to stop working on it when all of the world's best talent all of the world's capital is being allocated this thing and we're just going to stop working on it you got to be dumb bro but genuinely like people have that argument and another argument that absolutely blows my mind is how people are like oh well ai hasn't really put that much into the economy yet like we're putting a lot of money into it we we're, we're not getting very much output the ai is not affecting the economy very much and here's here's a little thing that you should probably know about it's called the automation paradox which states whenever building a system none of the gets none of the work gets done until the system is complete then all of the work gets done at once so whenever we're building artificial intelligence why would we implement the intelligence in the business to replace employees that are more smart than current ai have you ever thought about that one <laughs> like these systems aren't quite reliable and generally intelligent yet. They don't have reasoning and planning capabilities yet, which is why we're not working on those things. And after they get to a point where they're almost AGI, then everything will get replaced with AI at once. But right now, these systems really aren't that impressive, and I think it's quite obvious. But once they do just get a little bit more impressive, they don't have to go very far at all. They just have to have slight reasoning capabilities and slight planning capabilities, which we are pretty much there everything's going to fundamentally change. So those are my two cents. Um, I appreciate you for sticking this long to the video. I had to let out a little rant at the end of it because I, I see all of these like narratives being pushed around in the industry. And I'm just like, do you lack the ability to hold intellectual third space? Do you use your brain at all whenever comparing and contrasting these different topics? Like, I don't know. But anyways, thanks for watching. Subscribe, like, comment, and have a free community for people like you below if you like talking about these topics.